Hallo Leute, I am Kevin McFall and welcome to our channel, MyMerryMessyLife.com. We are an American family that moved here from Georgia in February of 2021. My wife is not on camera right now, but here she comes. Hello. There, there's Sarah. We're a family with four children and a cat. Today, I am mostly gonna talk today because I'm doing dirty, nasty Ugh, stuff that yuck. Sarah doesn't ever like to mess with, and that's oh. trash and recycling. And today, we're gonna show you how recycling is serious business in Germany. So, when we lived in Georgia, Taking out the trash was pretty easy, okay? Uh, we had two big giant bins. We had one big giant bin for all the trash, and we had one big giant bin for all the recycling. And so it was what you call single stream recycling. So you throw everything in that big bin, whether it's paper or plastic or uh, metal or whatever. Originally, we could recycle glass in that single stream, but then they decided that it was too dangerous for the trash workers to have the glass. And so we were no longer allowed to put glass in the recycling bin, so the glass went in the regular trash. You know, in Georgia at least, it was not a very big deal to, to do recycling. You just threw it all in one big bin. You couldn't even send glass. Uh, there was no composting. Uh, it was not that big a deal. And so I mentioned to some of my colleagues, I have colleagues uh, that are in California, and I mentioned to them that I'm having to really up my game in terms of recycling now that I moved to Germany. And he, he said, oh, well, I can relate. You know, here in California, it's really complicated and you get in lots of trouble if you don't do things right. So I don't know what it's like in, in California. It's more complicated than it was in Georgia. I'm not quite sure they're gonna meet the 20 different types of things that we need to sort into that I'm gonna show you today. <laughs> I was also inspired to do this post because I saw a YouTube video by Nauf and he had a book. So the book was How to Become German in 50 Simple Steps. And one of those 50 simple steps was becoming a master recycler. And so I could relate to that. So, so thank you now for, for validating all this work that I've had to do in getting up to speed on recycling here in Germany. When we first came, we furnished this entire house basically from Ikea. And we arrived and this whole room was filled with cardboard boxes. So when we first got here and started unpacking everything that we had ordered and then continually had things coming all the time, our postman, he got tired and said, oh no, there's seven, seven boxes today, four boxes today, every day. Uh, we say, all right, see you tomorrow to our postman because he'd bring us more boxes. And so in all those boxes is the cardboard and the packaging and the plastic and everything that comes along with it. And so in the pool house, we had literally half filled that pool house with cardboard and plastic and packaging. This was before we had a car, before we even knew what a Wertstoffhof or a recycling center was, and it just piled up like crazy. I was really overwhelmed. I knew that there were all sorts of things I needed to separate. I didn't know how to do it. I didn't know where to do it. And luckily, I had a very good friend here who took me by the hand and came over and took his car and took me to the Wertstoffhof and helped me separate my trash and taught me the, the ropes of how to do it so that I wasn't all alone. And ever since that, I felt like a, a little bit more of closer to being a master recycler. Today, I wanna show you all the different types of things we need to recycle. So we're in front of me right now is what we call Altpapier. And that is literally old paper. So we've got our old egg cartons, paper, scratch paper, brochures from places we've been, all the cardboard that we have. And we'll show you in a little bit outside of the different bins we have. Now, we have an alt papier bin and it comes every month. So every month they empty this alt papier bin. And as you can imagine, we still get a lot of cardboard boxes. So I have to take the cardboard boxes to the Wertstoffhof in between that month because it would definitely fill up too much. So we've got the alt papier. And then we have the plastic packaging. So that's all sorts, this one's really interesting because it has all sorts of different things. Chip bags, uh, bottle, um, plastic bottle tops, little fruit, you know, where you get fruit containers, all these, these things we get our nuts in. So it's really interesting. There's all sorts, I think they call it gemisch Kunststoff or something like that, mixed, mixed plastic. And so there's a bin at the Wertstoffhof for all of the mixed plastic. Now, 
all plastic is not created equal. So we've got the mixed plastic, but then there's PE plastic. And my friend, he described this really well that it's stretchy plastic. So if you can stretch it, it doesn't go in the mixed one. It goes, it's a PE plastic. And a lot of times on, the, on there, it'll say PE. Like here it says PE-LD, I think, LB something. But it's got the PE on there. And if it's stretchy, that goes in a different category. But then plastic bottles don't go in either of those two. They have their own place to go, plastic bottles. Now, these are different types of plastic bottles, okay? <laughs> All right? And these ones have a deposit or a font. I think that's how you pronounce it, P-F-A-N-D. I love that word. It's such a fun, fun word to spell. Uh, and so usually it says on there that they're fond. Usually you can tell they're thicker, sturdier bottles. They're the ones that have the deposit. Uh, the, the thinner, crunchier ones, those ones go uh, in the bottles at the Bergstoffhof. Now there are other bottles that are also deposit glass bottles. Okay, so most all of the beer bottles are deposits. Then also some of the glass uh, water bottles and even this uh, lemonade bottle. Some bottles are deposit bottles and some bottles are not deposit bottles. Just like the plastic ones, there's also glass ones that some can be deposited and some can't. Now, um, not all the bottles say the same thing. Uh, this one says Fond. Okay, the deposit, and it also says Mehrweg Flasche, Mehrweg, multiple ways glass. So it's multiple use glass. Um, this one just says Mehrweg, not Fund. This one says nothing, um, but I'm pretty sure I've done this one before. Uh, basically, I, when, when I go to deposit it, you can, you can put it in the machine and it'll spit it out if it doesn't like it. So if I don't know whether the bottle is a deposit or not, I'll go and try it, and if not, then I'll take the Wertstoff off. So usually it'll say Mehrweg or, uh, or Fant or something on there. If not, you just try them and you see. Then you have the beer cases, okay? So a lot of times when you go to the store, you might just carry home a whole case. It's a lot easier to get it into your car than having a whole bunch of bottles. Now, I haven't tried this one yet. I'm thinking this is a special, a special case. I'm not sure if it's the standard size. So I'm gonna go and I'm gonna try putting it in to see if it'll take it. Um, but I know actually the bottles that go in here, it, they won't take, so I'm not sure. I'll try this one out. Um, but uh, one really interesting thing, you know, I've told you all that I have had a little easier time learning German because I speak Swedish. But sometimes you get suckered. There's foes ami, the fake friends. Uh, and I like this one because in German, this case is called a kiste. And in Swedish, there's a word called schista, which is spelled the same just with an A at the end instead of an E. But that means coffin and not beer case. So that one's kind of funny that at first I was like, I have to have a beer coffin? I put my beer coffin in here? I wasn't quite sure what that meant. So that's kind of funny. <laughs> All right, so the plastic bottles, the beer bottles, and the other fond bottles, and then this are for a deposit. And some places in the north in the United States, there are deposits on some bottles, but where we lived in Georgia, there really wasn't any deposit. And so some Americans might not even know what that means. It's, I guess in the old days in America, we had that more. Um, but basically when you buy the item, Included in the cost is a little bit of an extra amount, maybe 25 cents or something like that. Actually, I think the beer kiste might actually be three euros. I'm not sure exactly how much they are. Um, but basically you pay extra when you buy the item and then when you return it, you get your money back. And it's really funny, like when you go to an Alm and buy a, a Schorle or something in a, in a bottle that has a deposit, they'll tell you, it's like, all right, well then this is the deposit bottle. You know, I, I'm not sure if they're like warning me that they charged me extra for that or whatever. I'm not sure. I've even been to some places where when they give you the bottle, they'll also give you a little token and you can return the bottle and the token to them and then you can get your deposit back from them instead of taking it to a reclaiming center. Now there's these reclaiming centers all over the place. I think basically all the drink stores have it, all the grocery stores have it. So when we go to Ithaca, I'll put, uh, bring, the, bring the things that I need to have on the deposit and then bring them to the store. You put all the things in the machine. That's why I was telling you sometimes it'll spit the bottles out that it doesn't want uh, and then you you get a little ticket and then you bring that ticket to the checkout and they'll subtract off the money that you have from your ticket from the price of what you bought for your groceries. Okay, now these are glass bottles that are not deposit, 
okay? Basically all the things you get with jam and spaghetti sauce and different things, and they go to the Wertstoffhof in the white glass uh, bin, okay? So there's different colors glass, and you have to separate the different colors into the different bins at the Wertstoffhof. So Kevin's not even done yet. There's like <laughs> one, two, three, four, five, six more categories. Seven, eight, nine. <gasps> nine more categories. Oh my gosh, I didn't even know it was this involved. <laughs> Like, I'm standing behind the camera. La I'm just. I just keep laughing. Like, <laughs> this is so funny. This. This may be the video that keeps people from moving to Germany. <laughs> we're so, we're so sorry. Need needless to say, I was a little. I was a little intimidated. And thank you so much to my friend that helped explain all this Doug. to me. Never could have figured this out myself. All right. Now this is a green bottle, and it. Uh, I've tried this one at the grocery store. The machine will not take this one for a deposit, so I have to take it to the batch stuff off. And it is green, so it goes in a different bin than the white glass. There are three different colors of glass at the Wertstoffhof. I already talked about the white and the green, and then there's a brown. And I don't often have brown glass because usually the brown glass is the beer bottles that go to the deposit. Now, now this one is, I don't know, it's kind of green, kind of brown. I'm not sure which bin I'm gonna put this in when I go to the Wertstoffhof. Um, but uh, like I said, usually don't have brown glass to, to bring every so often. Then we have the drink cartons. Tetra Pak, a very good Swedish invention. That uh, Swedes are known for all sorts of good stuff. So the Tetra Pak comes from Sweden and uh, it is doesn't go with the bottles and it doesn't go with the plastic, the mixed plastic. It goes in the flüssigkeit, the drink, uh, drink containers. And I think it's because inside there is a, a, a metal liner. And so it's got metal and uh, the cardboard stuff. So that goes in its own separate container. Now we have the tin cans or the tin, uh, Weiss, Weissblech, something like that. I had to look that one up. At least at the Wert, our Wertstoffhof, there's pictures. So there's a picture with all the tin cans and stuff, but then it says Weissblech, uh, which I did translate and it says like tin plate or something like that. So you got your tin cans, your bottle caps from your from your beer, tops that you have from your from your glass bottles, etc. Those go in Weissblech. Then we have more metal, the aluminum. So like my butter, butter wrapping, tops on my quark, little candy wrappers. Sometimes you get takeout in tin. So I'm sorry, in aluminum. And so that goes in a separate place. Then we have these sort of chip containers and oatmeal container. And these go in Sunstiga, uh, like miscellaneous or other or something like that. Again, I think it's because it has metal on the inside and then some cardboard on the outside. So that one took me a while to figure out. I figured that one out on my own because I brought it in and I just asked because I didn't know what to do with them. And they said, oh, goes in the Sunstiga. Batteries. Our kids go through Xbox controller batteries like there's nobody's business. This one's really interesting in America that I knew that we were not allowed to put ba batteries in our trash, but I never knew where we could bring the batteries. I, I never figured it out. Actually, I, I snuck them in the trash sometimes. I know that was not what I was supposed to do. Sometimes I would even take them to work because I knew where at work I could put hand in batteries. So I never quite knew what to do with batteries in America but at least there's a very obvious bin at the Wertstoffhof here, so I know exactly where to put them. And then we have styrofoam. It's really interesting in all the different packaging we've gotten, especially from Ikea, you never see styrofoam. They always pack in little pieces of corrugated cardboard, which is really nice. Uh, but then some of, some of the other places when you get furniture and different things, it comes in, in styrofoam. And with our kids, you have to be careful because you give this to them, they'll break it into a million pieces and there'll be styrofoam flying everywhere and static electricity, you got it attached to the walls and everything. Annoying stuff, I prefer not to have styrofoam, but sometimes we have it and you have to take this to the Wertstoffhof. And I love it. At the Wertstoffhof, there's this enormous bag. It's like this bag that's three meters tall, four meters tall, this giant bag. And you have to walk up this little wooden platform and you have to break up your styrofoam into little pieces and throw it in this giant bag. It's really fun, kind of funny. Uh, so that's what you have to do with the styrofoam. There's one category of things that I don't actually have any with me today, and that is packing peanuts. That's what we call them in English. I'm not sure which, but they're little tiny pieces of styrofoam, little tiny things, and you you know dump them in a box, and then you can put your your thing in something fragile in there, and it, and it keeps keeps it safe. So then there's a separate place for the packing peanuts that doesn't go with the regular styrofoam, and then there's other types of styrofoam that are a little bit softer, not this 
type that you can crack and break. And sometimes that one goes in the mixed plastic. I've seen, had some other ones that they said that don't go anywhere and go in the regular trash, which I thought was interesting. So that's curious. And so then we have our biomass. So here's an old banana from earlier today. Uh, <laughs> it's pretty funny. It's great th though that uh, you can, all your food waste goes. And when we first moved, we weren't sure if, you know, because in America, sometimes you do compost. It, with compost, it's only vegetable matter and it's not meat or animal matter. Uh, but here you put everything together, eggshells, vegetables, you know, leftover meat, everything goes in the biomass. And so uh, I'm not sure exactly what they do with it here in Germany. I think they ferment it or something. I'm not sure if they make energy out of it or if they do compost it into soil. You guys can maybe let us know. I'm, I, I've looked around and not quite sure. So maybe you guys can let me know what, what Germany actually does with, with the biomass. And I read on, online that uh, if you handle your biomass correctly, you won't have a bad smell and you won't get maggots even in the middle of the summer. Now, we have both of those things, bad smells and maggots, and it's now in the summer. I'm not sure what we're doing wrong, so maybe there's some way, better way we can do it. I mean, we have it inside of these little, these little compostable bags, and then we just set it inside our composting bin that's out by the, in the carport, so I'm not sure what else we're supposed to do to keep it from smelling. And then our last category is our residual waste, just our uh, Restmüll. And uh, I think if I've counted correctly, including the, pe the packing peanuts that I don't have today, I think that's 20 different things that we have to separate out. Uh, now, one other thing that I read uh, is that in the last 35 years, Germany has basically cut in half the amount of trash that goes in the residual waste because of all of the recycling and everything that they've done such a good job and really cut down on what goes in the landfill and just gets thrown away. The others are recycled or reused or, or whatever. So that's pretty amazing. I'm really proud to be here. I, I'm, I'm happy that I, I, I learned all this stuff and it doesn't bother me anymore. I think it's really cool that I'm happy to go about the effort to put all this stuff together and make sure that we do our part to help the environment. So I wanted to pop in really quick and say that I have a friend who I met in a Facebook group who's an American. They live here with their four kids, but they live in the Black Forest of Germany. And she says that her recycling process is much simpler than ours. <laughs> and then in her town, which actually has fewer people, I believe, fewer people than ours does. Uh, we both live in small villages. In her village, they let her put all of the plastic in one container. I think it's the yellow bin or something yellow like that. Bin. I've I've seen something yeah. about the yellow bin online and I have not seen one around here, so. So I just wanted to point that out that it's different in different parts of Germany just like it is in America. It's done by state. Is it done by state or done by Kreis or done by village or I I don't know. So you guys let us know or Gemeinde or something. I don't know. So let us know how it's done, but I know it's different and we'd love to hear in the comments below how the recycling is done in your part of Germany. So welcome to our pantry. We were actually really excited when we first were looking at this house and looking at the architectural drawings that there was this giant pantry, uh, which is really great. We've got all this space to keep all the food and everything. So really happy about the pantry. And it gives us space here to organize some of our recycling. And so here we've got this little guy and it has four different containers, four different containers in it. This is where I keep the mixed plastic packaging, the alt papier, and on the bottom, we have two more for the flusikite, for the tetra packs, and also for the PE plastic. Those are the four that we probably get the most of. And then for all the rest, I just keep a box, a, a cardboard box on the floor in here and just throw them all in there because, you know, I only have a couple batteries and a few tin cans and stuff every time. So and then I just take that box with me to the Wertstoffhof and then go around all the different bins and drop the stuff in. So here we are in the carport with our trash cans. We've got three trash cans. Uh, the first and most favorite one is our biomass one. So. There's a little fly came out of there. Ugh, yuck. <laughs> there's a- So nasty. And there's a couple little maggots crawling oh. around there. 
So please, if you have suggestions on what we're supposed to do so it's not so bad, let me know. I do remember there was one of you guys when we were talking about recycling when we first moved in, he said, wait till the summertime in your bio, you'll have maggots and all sorts of yumminess. So I don't know, maybe somebody has some suggestions on what we can do. Uh, then here's our rest mull. Uh, and what I love is that our residual waste, our rest mull, is the smallest trash can of all of them. And when I first, we first moved in, and like the first couple cycles of trash, we filled it up really full and it was like overflowing and I was like really worried. I was like, can we get, I, I talked to our landlord, can we get a high, a bigger, a bigger trash can? And this is like the biggest one, unless you go like big industrial size. Uh, but as it turned out, it's actually not a problem. I mean, there's actually a ton of space in there and it's Monday today and they're coming on Thursday. It got plenty of room for the trash between now and Thursday. So every two weeks, this thing gets, gets emptied. And in America, we had a trash can probably 50% bigger than this one that got put out every week. So we're definitely producing a lot less trash uh, that's going to the landfill. That's really cool. So then this one is the Alt Papier. It's our biggest one, but that only gets, they only come every month for that. So uh, that one, right now, that one's mostly our choke point that we fill that one up pretty much every month. And that, in, that doesn't include all these bigger cardboard boxes. I save them and take them to the Wertstoffhof myself. Uh, every time I go to the Wertstoffhof, the, the guy that works there, he's like, immer neue Möbel, <laughs> always new furniture, you know? So these cardboard boxes are from the entertainment center that we have in our living room or new bicycles or whatever. So we always have big cardboard boxes that I have to take to the Wertstoffhof. Um, these wooden crates, these wooden pallets, I gotta ask, I'm not sure if I can take them there. Um, they've been kicking around for a while because I just got to ask when I go to the Wertstoffhof and see if they'll take them, probably do somewhere because I know they take old building materials and stones and stuff. There's probably somewhere to take the, the wooden pallets. So we produce quite a lot of the uh, mixed plastic and we're still getting a fair amount of deliveries that have a lot of the packaging with the PE plastic. So I keep these plastic containers out here um, and actually you can see this one's already overflowing. Actually, I didn't go, it's been a week and a half, I think, since I've been to the Wertstoffhof, and this one's really overflowing. We produce a, a fair amount of that mixed plastic. So I've got these bins out here that I can take the, the little, little ones in the kitchen and dump them in here, and then I you know, take that whole thing and just dump it in the bin when I go to the Wertstoffhof. So I hope you enjoyed uh, all of the crazy mess that we make of, our, of all of us. There are six people in the cat, cat's trash, I'm pretty sure it's supposed to go in the, in the rest mold, so kitty litter always ends up in there. Uh, but thank you for, for hanging with us today. For those of you that are moving to this area of Bavaria, hopefully you, you can use this as a, as a primer on how to do all of your recycling. Um, but I'm glad that I've figured it out and I'm happy to be recycling things. And now I ch can check off one of those boxes, 50 easy steps to become German. So I, maybe I've got one of them covered now. Hope you guys enjoyed Kevin's video. Now you get your own love Yay. spotlight theme. <laughs> um, so uh, yeah, hope you guys enjoyed it and we'll see you in the next video. Juice. Juice.